Welcome back to Table Talk on the Road. We are joined by Chris Sturgill and we are at the Stimson Hospital. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. We have an exciting day ahead of us today. We are going on a ghost hunt, but before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this place. So Chris, I'm gonna turn that over to you. There's a long history, so. I'll make it brief. <laughs> Okay, so the building was actually built as a mansion and was finished in 1874. It was built by a man named John Swayze, who is actually a con artist who had been kicked out of New York for his favorite con, which was moving into a town, establishing a small business, getting a bunch of people to invest their money, and then just leaving town with their money. And this would have been 1850s, 60s, so you could get away with stuff like that in those days. But if you think back, that was also the wild, wild west day, so you could get shot in the back for that as well, which probably should have happened to that guy. So he moved into Eaton Rapids and decided to build a mansion and get a better class of suckers to establish his, his con. So he built a hardware store downtown and got a bunch of investors and borrowed a bunch of money very deeply to finish the building. Everything was state of the art, so it was very expensive. Um, his investors called him out on the loans and he was unable to pay them, so he defaulted on his mortgage and got run out of town. He lit the building on fire on his way out, even though that was never proven, and then just headed out west somewhere where he eventually died. Uh, the new owners rebuilt the house and everything was great and it was a mansion until 18, that was till 1918, when a nurse named Harriet Chapman decided she wanted to have a local hospital. She bought out the funds, um, knocked on the guy's door, and asked if he would let uh, her buy it for a hospital. And within 30 days, all of his belongings were gone, and they started construction, you know, on the building. It took about six months, and it was completed, and they actually had their first patients. Wow, that's amazing. And that's just a brief history. <laughs> that's very brief. <laughs> because we went over all this, and there's a lot to go over here. But, yes. So... I know this place is a little bit haunted. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's more than a little bit haunted. So um, between 3,600 and 4,000 people were born here, and we've established roughly 2,500 plus people died here, closer to 3,000, just by research we've done, and the wife has done most of that. So that's a lot of energy coming and going for a small structure, and it still remains to this day. Absolutely. So tell us, what is the creepiest thing that you have experienced? Probably the creepiest thing we've um, experienced would be shadow figures and, and disembodied voices, uh, equipment being moved on the floor upstairs that's no longer there. I mean, things like that. Amazing. Well, thank you for giving us this um, history of this building. Yes. And stick with us because we are going to go on a ghost hunt and we will be right back. Welcome back to Table Talk on the Road. This morning we are joined by Brad and Brenda McCulka, who are paranormal investigators taking us on our ghost hunt this morning. And guess what guys, we are going to the basement of Stimson Hospital to check out the morgue, which was once abandoned. I'm definitely not going first. I'm going. You didn't believe me? There's scratches on this so that was the elevator shaft, yes. and then this is the more. As soon as everyone's ready, we will go dark. Right. We're picking up something by your feet. Right. Okay. It's laying down, just right there. Of course. <laughs> but what I find interesting, interesting is it's laying down. Yeah. Which, this is the morgue. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, but I'm, I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, no. <laughs> what? Over here. Is yep. It <gasps> <laughs> yep, it's right there. What? If one of us stood where she is, would it still be there? We could it's, try. It's let's yeah. switch. Yeah, it's okay, very let's, possible. Let's okay, switch. Let's it's standing in front of you. Huh? It's, uh, it's, it's right, standing right side up. In front up. of you. It's, it's like uh, right side up. Cold yeah. spots are the local, very small, usually areas, and that's that will be a spirit because the spirit is taking the energy from the air. Oh, I'm sorry, he's taking the warmth from the air as energy, and it creates a cold spot. Her oh. whole leg is, is, was blue oh, a second ago. When we were here in August, I sensed that there was a child in this hallway. She's dressed in a hospital gown. Okay. Her hair is like a, you know, disheveled, like it has me cold. It's like really cold right there. Just pull a rope. Right no! Oh! Can you feel it? My goodness! 
she's in front of you right now. And if you can see on, oh on the thermal oh imaging right here, oh my, she's oh my goodness, there is a blue light <gasps> going towards her hand right now. Hi, little girl. Can you give us your name? Oh. oh. What did you say? I think it said Anne. Help. Help. Like coldness wrapping around my hand. Michaela's here, all red, but between you and the post, black. So something's with her. Yeah, well, there's something there. Yeah. All right, well, this wraps up part one of our ghost hunting experience. Make sure you stick around. You won't want to miss part two. Welcome back to part two of our ghost hunting experience. We are back with Brad and Brenda, and you are not going to want to miss part two of this ghost hunt. Let's go. Between you and the post, black. So something's with her? Yeah, well, there's something there. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me take a picture. No, no, stay there. It's black. black. Yeah, stay it's, there, it's Michaela. Black. Stay you, over you, there. Michaela is perfectly, you know, red and stuff. But then over here, she, oh, now it's gone. You are safe. So the boiler room has, has, has history also of a black shadow coming out from the wall, hugging the person sitting on the steps. I'm gonna go sit on the steps. Okay, I'm feeling cold air. Is he coming in? I'm not sure, but I can feel it right now. It's like right in front of us right here. It's like right yeah. here. In front, yep. So something touching my neck, yeah. Oh no. My necklace. Okay, so my necklace has been close to my chest uh -huh. and it went like, doop. Oh, nice. That's their way of getting your attention. Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch my necklace. I, okay, okay so but why did my necklace do that? Because something grabbed it. What the heck? <laughs> it, it's not uncommon to have like, to have like your your pant leg pulled or your shirt pulled, your hair touched, and the necklaces being touched. Yeah, that's just their way of getting your attention. No, I don't want to freak you out, Michaela, but there's you can't see him. He is right behind this doorway here. He keeps on peeking out. To see what we're doing? Yeah. Your back should start, if it's not already, it should be, be cold. He's kneeling down behind you. What? What? Yeah. Don't, don't move. You might scare him away. Can you touch your hand? He's, he's hesitant. He's, uh, he's directly behind her. And he's like squatting down like this. He has a white, white gown on. He's barefoot. He's coughing. Dad, Dad. He isn't a doctor. He was a patient. <laughs> he was a patient. He's a patient. That yeah, he's still behind you. My back feels really tight. Does it like hurt? No, it just feels like almost like I can't move, but it's not. Oh, he might be trying to get her energy. <laughs> Which is possible. Which is not a bad it's thing. like my my spine. The spirits will drain you, especially if you have experiences. If you feel drained, eat sweets. You have two behind you now, Michaela. Can you take my headphones oh. off. Two. The uh, child's here. That would be insane. Two. The baby's back. Yeah. Baby's, I felt something touch me. It's her. It's the, she has the white gown, uncombed hair. The little girl. Yeah, she's back here too. What's his name? I'll see if, if I can find out later. Hey. She's saying her name is Mary. That's, that's a good name. That's a cute name. Yeah. And the gentleman, he's saying that his name is Philip. Philip. Mary and Philip. Philip or Philip, you know, Phil, Philip. I don't think that he can draw any more energy. He's he's backing up a little bit. Like it's still in like my lower back, 
but it's not through my whole spine anymore. If Philip has left, he is gone. Well, that is the end of our ghost hunting experience, and I will say, I'm a believer. I am 100% a believer after tonight. I was a believer before, though. Okay, but after what we experienced tonight, I'm a believer a thousand percent. Um, little baby, little girl, Philip, thanks for coming around, <laughs> and we'll see you guys after this short break.